Old growth forests, beautiful rugged shorelines, and beaches offer an endless repertoire of things to do, from hiking and camping to surfing and whale watching. Welcome to Watchzilla, today, we are going to explore the largest island on the Pacific coast of North America, Vancouver Island. The capital of British Columbia, Victoria delivers cultural attractions, nightlife, dining, and shopping. Small towns spread around Vancouver Island are some of the best places to visit, where you'll find a slower pace of life, and discover remote lodges in the rainforest, where you can relax and soak up nature. The mild coastal climate draws visitors here year-round. Although summer is the busy season, in winter, it's not uncommon to find surfers hitting the waves on the western shore, while skiers head to the slopes in the interior of the island. The landscape is one of mountains, lakes, rainforest, and dramatic coastline dotted with small towns and villages. Most visitors begin their trip to Vancouver Island in Victoria, at the sound end of the island. Arrival is usually by air or by ferry from Vancouver or Seattle. Ferries also run regularly from Vancouver to Nanaimo. On the west side of Vancouver Island are towns like Tofino and Port Renfrew, and the famous West Coast Trail. On the east side of the island, looking out over the Salish Sea, are the towns of Ladysmith, Nanaimo, Parksville, Qualicum Beach, Courtney, and Comox. Number 10, Victoria. Victoria is Vancouver Island's largest city and is also the capital of British Columbia. Looking out over the Juan de Fuca Strait to the mountains on the Olympic Peninsula in Washington, British Columbia's capital is one of the most beautiful cities in Canada. The scenic inner harbor is where much of the action is centered and where many of the tourist attractions are located. There is plenty of historic architecture to explore around the Parliament buildings, Boston Square, Fort Street and the old Customs House. The historic Fairmont Empress, one of Victoria's landmark buildings, looks over the inner harbor. Built in 1908, this hotel has hosted visiting royalty throughout the decades. High tea at the Empress has become a popular thing to do in Victoria, where visitors can sip tea and enjoy sandwiches, scones, and desserts in a lovely old room filled with antique furnishings. Other major attractions in Victoria are the Royal BC Museum, offering insight into the natural and human history of British Columbia, and the Parliament buildings. Culture vultures will be in their element. Victoria is a small city, and the compact downtown makes visiting the sites incredibly easy. It's also filled with restaurants that range from casual to fine dining. Head to Fisherman's Wharf for an unbeatably colorful lunch among the brightly painted floating houses. There are a handful of delicious food stalls here selling the likes of seafood chowder and fish tacos. You can even buy small fish to feed the bold harbor seals which approach the wharf. Victoria is also a fantastic base from which to join a whale-watching tour. Here you can explore the Strait of Juan de Fuca and have an excellent chance of seeing the resident orca pod which lives here all year round. You can also spot magnificent humpback on their migration over the summer. Whale sightings are so likely that companies offer a return trip for free if you're unlucky enough not to spot one. If you are spending a few days in Victoria and want to expand your sightseeing to include parks and outdoors activities, beautiful hiking trails are scattered around the city and nearby areas. Number 9, Miniature World. Miniature World continues to delight the young and the young at heart with its numerous tiny worlds. Tucked along the side of the Fairmont Empress Hotel, this huge collection of skillfully crafted models depicting important battles, historic towns and popular stories, is far more fascinating than it sounds. Lined with dozens of diminutive diorama scenes, divided into themes ranging from Camelot to space and from Fairyland to Old England, it has plenty of push-button action, several trundling trains, and the chance to see yourself on a miniature movie theater screen. Follow the model Canadian Railway as it travels across the country or spend some time at the big top in the Circus World display. If you are a literary buff, you'll appreciate a glimpse of the world of Dickens, while time travel aficionados should check out the Space 2201 AD display. An immaculately maintained reminder of innocent yesteryear attractions. Many recent visitors praised the model's intricate details and said to take your time as you take it all in. Reviewers said this was an excellent way to spend a few hours on a rainy day and a lot of fun for kids. Number 8, Victoria Bug Zoo. If you're traveling to Victoria with kids in tow, many recent visitors recommended a stop at the Victoria Bug Zoo. Children are the main audience, but this is a hugely entertaining and educational experience on any level. Located a block or so north of the Inner Harbor, this fairly small facility is home to a large number of creepy crawlies. 
It's not big, nor are its resident critters, however, this diminutive indoor zoo is a small marvel, thanks to the enthusiasm and knowledge of its guides. Here, you'll come face to face with gigantic walking sticks, furry tarantulas and even glow-in-the-dark scorpions. Recent visitors raved about the zoo's employees, who are ready to answer any questions you may have about their six- and eight-legged friends. Plus, you can even hold some of the insects, a major point of praise for reviewers. Atlas beetles, dragon-headed crickets and thorny devils are all explained, admired and, on occasion, lifted out of their tanks to be handed around for closer inspection. Number 7, Tofino. Apparently, Tofino is pretty famous in Canada. This surf town on the island's west coast is a real little gem. Looking out over Clackwood Sound and surrounded by old-growth forest and seemingly endless beaches, this little fishing village is a popular endless beach, this little fishing village is a popular tourist destination on Vancouver Island, but rarely feels busy. Approximately 42 kilometers north of the small town of Uklulet, Tofino is one of the oldest settlements on the west coast, and it has a very remote feel. Despite its popularity, it has remained small. The small and friendly town is packed with independent arts shops, cafes and restaurants, there really is no other word to describe it than cool. Nearby are a number of outstanding lodges and resorts with great views out over the ocean. It's also known for being Canada's hottest surf destination, with people coming here to surf year-round. Surfing is a favorite pastime, but if you don't surf yourself, you'll have just as much fun combing the beaches and watching the waves. If you aren't into surfing, storm watching from November to February, when huge waves roll in off the Pacific Ocean, is another reason people like to visit Tofino in the quiet of the off-season. This is one of the best locations to join a bear-watching tour. Head out in a comfortable covered boat or a zippy zodiac to view coastal black bears foraging for crabs and shellfish along the shorelines. You'll be amazed how close you can get to the bears, so it's perfect for avid photographers. Tofino also makes the perfect base for visiting the Pacific Rim National Park and Hot Springs Cove, more on those later. Just outside of town is Pacific Rim National Park, an incredible natural area with some of Tofino's best hikes and campgrounds. This area is home to ancient cedars, which are some of the oldest trees in Canada. It's also where you'll find Tofino's famous Long Beach, stretching along the coast for 16 kilometers. Number 6, Parliament Buildings. With beautiful buildings, lots of cafes and restaurants, and a friendly vibe, Victoria is a great place to start exploring Vancouver Island. Victoria is the capital of British Columbia, and it's therefore not surprising to find the imposing British Columbia Parliament here. The British Columbia Parliament buildings are hard to miss. While the BC Parliament is home to the Legislative Assembly of British Columbia, this beautiful building is accessible to the public. These neo-baroque structures with their impressive blue dome face off against Victoria's famed Fairmont Empress Hotel and make an excellent backdrop for an inner harbor stroll, especially at night when the facade is dressed in lights. Return in the evening when the elegant exterior is illuminated like a Christmas tree. But if you want a closer look at the building, the parliament process and the history of the province, many travelers recommend a tour, raving about the well-informed guides. You can visit the British Columbia Parliament independently or join one of the free guided tours. There are several tours a day which last between 30 to 45 minutes. You can go behind the facade on a free 45-minute guided tour, then stop for lunch at the secret politician's restaurant inside. If you happen to be here when Parliament is in session, consider sitting in on one of the Legislative Assembly debates. You'll find a schedule of discussion topics on the Parliament calendar. Number 5, Krigderich Castle. To sample the Victorian high life, head about a mile east of the inner harbour to Krigderich Castle, a national historic site. More ostentatious country mansion than fortified castle, Krigderich, with its turrets, stained glass windows and palatial interior, looks like it might have been teleported over from the Scottish Highlands. This impressive home was built in the late 1800s for coal tycoon Robert Dunsmuir. Now a national historic site, it's said to be a prime example of a bonanza castle. Beautifully preserved by a local historical society, the interior is filled with rich period detail and notable for its spectacular wood-paneled staircase that ascends from the entry vestibule. Although it's more of a mansion than a castle, it houses 39 rooms, each of which is decked out in furnishings from the turn of the 20th century. You'll need at least an hour to admire the four floors of rooms, including a dining room, smoking room, billiard room and dance hall. Another highlight is the more than 30 gorgeous stained glass windows, the majority of which illustrate floral themes. 
Even if you aren't big history buff, many previous visitors recommend stopping by Krigderich Castle for a glimpse into how the wealthy once lived, not to mention stunning views of downtown Victoria. The only downside among reviewers, the house doesn't have any ramps or elevators, making it difficult for visitors with mobility issues to tour the upper three floors of the castle. Number 4, Royal BC Museum. The Royal British Columbia Museum offers visitors a comprehensive introduction to the region's history and culture. The Royal BC Museum, founded in 1886, is both the province's natural and human history museum and the home of its archives. This combination has led the museum to be called one of Canada's greatest cultural treasures, and following Queen Elizabeth II's approval, HRH Prince Philip bestowed the museum's royal title in 1987. Arguably the finest museum in British Columbia and carrier of a royal prefix since 1987, Victoria's flagship site mixes the cream of BC's provincial exhibits with a revolving lineup of world-class temporary exhibitions. Featured collections currently include royalty in BC, the Frederick Daly Collection and the First Nations Collection. The museum also boasts an IMAX theater and rotating special exhibits. Adding value is an IMAX theater and a small park replete with indigenous and early pioneer history. Permanent fixtures inside the museum are split into natural history and human history. Both focus exclusively on BC. Recent visitors said this museum is a must-see when in Victoria as it offers a far-reaching look at the region's geography and indigenous people. Reviewers also praised the museum's layout, which is situated in chronological order. Some reviewers even said this was one of the best museums they've ever visited. Plus, if you're hungry, don't miss the museum's year-long food truck festival which takes place in the building's back courtyard. Number 3, Cathedral Grove. In Macmillan Provincial Park, a stand of towering Douglas firs known as Cathedral Grove includes several trees between 600 and 800 years old. Cathedral Grove is a rare and endangered remnant of an ancient Douglas fir ecosystem in Macmillan Provincial Park on central Vancouver Island. This spiritual home of tree huggers is the mystical highlight of Macmillan Provincial Park. Located between Parksville and Port Alberni, it's often overrun with summer visitors, try not to knock them down as they scamper across the highway in front of you. Here are two short and easy boardwalks, one on each side of the road. Short accessible trails on either side of the road wind through a dense canopy of vegetation, offering glimpses of some of BC's oldest trees, including centuries-old Douglas firs more than 3 meters in diameter. Only huggable in groups. The grove's biggest trees are 800 years old, 75 meters in height and 9 meters in circumference. Also, in the park, are old western red cedar. It's easy to lose yourself in this mysterious green world, the park was hit by a major wind storm in 1997, which took down many old trees. Many of the huge trunks are now on the ground, which is also an impressive sight. People from around the world visit Cathedral Grove every year, which was shortlisted for Canadian Broadcasting Corporation's Seven Wonders of Canada contest in 2007. Beyond the park, the road continues westwards across the Beaufort Range to Mount Aerosmith. Number 2, Pacific Rim National Park Reserve. Pacific Rim National Park covers a lush stretch of coast between Tofino and Uklulet. One in a magnificent seven of BC national parks, Pacific Rim is replete with wave-whipped beaches and brooding forests, most of them far from civilization. There are three sections to Pacific Rim National Park Reserve, the Broken Group Islands, the Long Beach Unit, and the West Coast Trail. The combination of the land and sea area encompasses 511 square kilometers. The West Coast Trail Unit to the south contains one of the most famous multi-day hikes in Canada. The reserve is known for its rugged coast and temperate rainforests, which visitors can experience along the 75 kilometers West Coast Trail. The rainforest of ancient cedars and shoreline of beaches and rocky headlands revels the wild and rugged natural beauty of Vancouver Island. The beaches are equally bleak and beautiful, windswept and full of life, depending on the mood of the ocean. Long soft sand beaches are found all along Pacific Rim National Park. Long Beach, Schooner Cove and Wiccaninish Bay are the ones to look out for. The Broken Group Islands unit in Barkley Sound is a kayaking nirvana. The Broken Group Islands consist of over 100 small islands and inlets in the Barkley Sound, while the Long Beach section is the most visited and includes the picturesque coast between Tofino and Uklulet. The northern Long Beach unit, between Tofino and Uklulet, is famous for its surf beaches. The 16-kilometer long Long Beach is a vast expanse of sand where people come to walk, beachcomb, surf in the big waves, or simply enjoy a sunset. 
explore the meandering coast and islands by kayak for a unique view of the stunning scenery. Whales can sometimes be spotted offshore, especially in spring and autumn. Storm watching has become a popular activity in fall and winter when photographers and visitors come to the park to watch the huge waves crash against the shore. Massive piles of driftwood testify to the violence of the ocean waves. Hiking through the ancient rainforest is another favorite activity as there are plenty of well-marked trails. There's no atmosphere quite like it thanks to the ethereal trailing moss which blankets the cedar trees. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Number 1. Buckhart Gardens One of the best things to see on Vancouver Island are the famous Buckhart Gardens. Buckhart Gardens is one of the highlights of Vancouver Island, particularly for those with an interest in gardening. Far more than just another pretty flower arrangement, Buckhart is a national historic site and a triumph of early 20th century gardening aesthetics. These world-renowned gardens have impressed Victoria visitors since 1904. Begun in 1904 by Jenny Buckhart, the grounds have been over a century in the making. Set in an old quarry outside of Victoria, these fabulous gardens provide a year-round opportunity to step into a peaceful natural setting with flowers, trees, pathways, and places to relax. With its well-tended blooms, ornate fountains and diverse international flavor, it's hard to imagine that this land was once an abandoned limestone quarry. Resting on 55 acres about 15 miles north of the inner harbor, Buckhart Gardens were carefully constructed by Jenny Buckhart on her husband's former limestone quarry. Today, more than one million people stop by each year to meander along the property's flower-lined paths, which contain more than 900 varieties. Botanical displays change seasonally and are particularly lovely between spring and fall. There are the colors of spring's new blooms, the entertainment and fireworks in summer, fall's golden hues and the Christmas decorations in winter. At Christmas, the gardens are lit with a display of Christmas lights and decorations, and various festivities and activities are on offer, including ice skating in an outdoor rink. Visit on a summer evening to see the gardens illuminated by colored lights and to enjoy some musical entertainment. Every evening in July and August live music performances take place at Buckhart Gardens. Some of the Buckhart Gardens highlights are the Sunken Garden, Rose Garden, Concrete Lawn Walks and the Japanese, Italian and Mediterranean Gardens. Try to see them all if you can. The easiest way to visit the Buckhart Gardens is via this popular bus tour. Tour buses roll in relentlessly throughout the summer, but the gardens with their undulating topography are big enough to absorb the melee. Included in the tour are transportation in a comfortable touring car, a professional guide and entrance to the gardens. Travelers describe the gardens as incredibly beautiful with awesome views and recommend that you bring a camera. They also advised setting aside several hours to make the most of the experience. If you need a break, retreat to one of the three eateries located on site. There is also a carousel and boat tours available on site. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watchzilla and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.